Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Eat, Sleep, and Invest. I'm your host, Brian Driscoll, and we have Tony Javier with us today. How's it going, Tony? Brian, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. I'm glad to, glad to be on. Yeah, glad to have you. <clears throat> hey, so Tony's Tony's interesting. He deals with marketing as well on a different channel, so it's, it's going to be really good because as, as a lot of you guys know when we're talking about, there's no right and wrong way. Everything done consistently works. So, hey, Tony, why don't you give us a little background? Like, what even got you involved with real estate and TV? Yeah, so I've been uh, investing for 20 years now. Um, I got started with an info product called Carlton, Carlton Sheets No Down Payment System, which a lot of old that. school guys know about. Um, I don't know if he's selling now. He passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, he sold that program for probably, I don't know, 30 years or so. And uh, so that's how I got started. Ta- taught me to buy properties with no money down. Um, so I was in uh, college waiting tables, uh, bought the program. And within, I think it was about four or five months, I'd bought a couple of properties and just started burring properties from there. I'd raise money, um, buy properties, refinance them, cash, cash them out and uh, pay my investors off and, 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 uh, and just kept keeping properties over the years. And we, we use that method uh, to today. And uh, so over the last 20 years, we've done close to a thousand flips, done a ton of burrs. Um, for those of you who don't know what burr is, that's buy, renovate. Um, is it rent, rehab? Rent, uh, rehab, rent, and repeat. Uh, there might be another R in there somewhere, but yeah, so that's basically the concept. So uh, if you do it right, you basically have no money invested in the properties because you're able to build that equity and go to the bank and, and refinance it for the, the new value of the property. So um, so yeah, it's been been a long, fun journey. And um, TV, I started about 10 years ago. So that's about 10 years ago is when I started the automation side of my business. So I realized that you actually could have a business to ran without you. Um, so I hired a coach that had a business that he didn't look at properties. He didn't meet with sellers. He didn't meet with buyers, um, didn't manage construction. And I'm like, there's no way you can do that. So, uh, so I ended up hiring him as a coach and, uh, you know, within about two to three years, I was able to, um, automate my business and move from Wichita, Kansas to San Diego. Uh, and in that process, I found TV commercials. So I started doing TV, t- um, actually it's been 11, I think 11 years now, 10 or 11 years. And, um, I had someone uh, who had a construction business that was doing $2 million a year just from TV commercials. And he's like, you have to talk to my media guy. He got me on TV. He's awesome. He can buy the ads for you. Uh, He knows media like the back of his hand. So I ended up um, uh, contacting him and, you know, just like anything else, it's like, if I see opportunity, I'm jumping on it. So uh, so got on TV, been doing it for the last, you know, 10, 10 or so years. And it's been by far the best marketing channel and the most consistent It's create created the most branding and credibility for my business. That's cool. And th- man, a thousand flips and like a thousand deals. That's a lot of deals to do. I mean, guys in the business know that's a lot of work. <clears throat> like, how'd you do it? How did you, how were you managing all that kind of stuff? Like, like that's a ton of, ton of numbers there. Yeah. So for the first 10, 12, about 12 years, I did a lot of it myself. I had a team, you know, here and there, I had a property manager managing properties, but, uh, for about, I think it was about 12 years. I met with all the sellers. I re I managed all the construction projects. And like I'd mentioned, like, I didn't realize you could have a business and not do that. Right. It was like, you know, I wanted to meet with sellers cause I thought I could no- negotiate the best price. I, thought I needed to manage rehabs because I knew what walls needed to be knocked out. I knew how to push contractors, you know, all that kind of stuff that we we think that we need to do, right? And now, like in my business, like I, I work a few hours a week at most in my real estate investing business. I have a team that runs um, that runs everything for me. They meet with the sellers. They um, they, they manage the contractors. Basically, I just see the contracts. I see the budgets and see the financials. Um, so I'm seeing it from a very high level. Um, so that, that's, you know, that's why I've been able to not get burnt out the last 10 years is because I've built a great team that manages, uh, most ac- aspects of the business. And, you know, a lot of people think, well, what, you know, why would you want to give that up? You could do that better than, you know, than other people. And what I realized is there's always going to be somebody they can do something better than you, no matter what, no matter how great you think you are at something, there's somebody that can do what you're doing better than you. And so now I'm really big on utilizing my time by being creative, by building businesses, by building people. And then my people are the ones that in turn 
help build my build my business. Yeah, that, that's that's such a good point you bring up there too. Just <clears throat> I, have, I have the same problem sometimes. It's like, yeah, I could do that. The guys are doing it like eighty percent of what I'd want to do, a hundred percent, but they're doing a good job without you doing it. So you can spend your time on growing businesses, things like that. So that's huge for anybody listening. So let's talk about TV because that that's interesting. <clears throat> so whenever you're advertising on TV, number one, when people get on TV, now they're a celebrity type of thing in their in their areas. Like what kind of, what do you see whenever an investor is advertising on TV? Like what kind of benefits do they get and how does it work? And give us a little rundown there. Yeah, TV is amazing. I mean, just think about it. If you walk down the street and you see a celebrity on the street, compared to just a regular person, how much different do you look at that person? Right. I mean, obviously like actors like Brad Pitt and, you know, those famous actors, they get paid and they're in big movies and all that. Um, but even if like someone's a news anchor or, um, someone you just see a TV commercial, um, the credibility that that person has because they are on TV is you, you can't beat it. There's nothing else that I know of that beats that credibility. Uh, for some pe- for some reason, whether you get paid or you pay someone to be on TV, um, your name and your credibility, the way that people treat you and trust you is just so much different. Um, so the, you know, over the last 10 years, basically, you know, you know, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, famous by any means, but like everybody in Wichita pretty much knows who I am. Cause I've been on TV for 10 years. Like when I go from San Diego, um, uh, which I spend, you know, I, I go to Wichita probably once a year, maybe twice a year. Um, when I go to Wichita where all my TV commercials are airing, like there's always somebody that comes up to me and says, you're the TV guy, or, you know, I'll get kind of funny looks like, man, I know, I know that guy from somewhere. Um, and then even when I was in Wichita, so I was in Wichita for probably four years while my TV commercials were running. And I, you know, when I would meet with sellers, sellers would be like, oh, wow, it's you coming out here. Um, or, you know, when I, you know, I'd meet a contractor, they would be like, oh, it's so cool to meet you. It's like, I'm just a normal guy that's on TV, but for some reason I get this, you know, that this persona that I'm a celebrity and that, um, you know, that I, you know, people just look at you differently that way. Um, and then with sellers, it's just the credibility factor. Like when you do any other marketing method, typically they're, you know, texting and cold calling, they're like, take me off your list or, you know, that kind of thing. Or even if they are a lead and they want to sell their house, they're still going to bet the crap out of you, right? But with TV, with, with you know, with me and the people that we've helped get on TV, this the same thing, you know, is hold true in pretty much every market. And that when they call you from TV, it's like they are actually, it's almost like you're interviewing them. They feel like they're being interviewed. Like, hey, you're on TV, come help me. Will you help me? As opposed to you trying to convince them why you should help them, right? Um, so there, and there's so many other, you know, great things, you know, you do, um, you know, you do online marketing and things like that. So TV helps out as well. Like when people see direct mail websites, you know, things of that nature, if you're on TV and they know you're on TV, they're going to mention that they're going to be like, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I've seen you on TV. And then the conversation is just so much different once they, uh, once they realize that, that you were the one on TV. Yeah. And you know what, that's so true too. Cause like me being a marketer, I know I like behind the scenes kind of stuff, but like most people, if someone's on TV, they're like, well, they got to be reputable. They wouldn't be on TV. <clears throat> they got to be good at what they're doing or else they wouldn't be there. So it, it does. Yeah. The credibility is just instant versus having to, uh, especially like if you're in a competition, you're, you're out giving an offer and then there's other competition too that they're, they're going to pick most likely pick the guy they feel more comfortable with. And TV makes them feel like they know you too, because they're seeing you all the time. Yeah, we've gotten a ton of deals where people are like, you know what, your offer's lower than the other guys, but we just don't know that guy. But we've seen you on TV. We know you've been around a long time. And we get deals because of that. You know, five, you know, our, our prices are pretty cheap. So we're usually buying properties between 50 and 100 grand, but we've been $10,000 lower than some people, um, some other competitors. And they're like, we're going to go with you because we don't know if that, we, we just don't have a good feel about that guy. He's not on TV and we know you guys are are credible. So, um, you know, you can get better deals, especially if, especially with the leads that come in that you were the only one that's called, you know, there's other marketing methods where they're going to call a bunch of people, but with TV, you hit them at the right time where they're like just getting ready to think about selling and you hit them with your TV commercial and they call you, you may be the only one out there. So you can get a much better deal on that property and you're more likely to get it. Right. Yeah. 
and, and also too, because they get to see you talk like most ads, like uh, direct mail is just text or a lot of even like on Facebook, we're using text ads. Uh, we'll retarget with videos, but they just see the text versus on TV. They get to see you, see your persona, kind of get to know you a little bit there. Uh, what demographics are you seeing on TV that are, uh, what's the audience? Like who, well, who's still watching TV commercials? Well, here's the beautiful thing. Like people grew up with TV. Like a lot of people grew up with TV, right? And so, you know, back in the day, that was like the thing to do. Like if you had a TV, you would sit in front of the TV. That was like, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, it? It was just something that if you had a TV, it was really cool, like way back in the day, right? And if you had a TV, you took advantage of it. Like you'd get get in front of the TV and it would kind of be like family night. And it, it still happens with a lot of families. Um, uh, but, you know, we feel like we're hitting our demographic. The older demographic is still watching TV. Younger still watch TV. They stream and they do a little bit more stuff that's like a little bit outside of what we do. But we're hitting people that are 50 to 60 plus. And so over the last 10 years, we've tested different things. We feel like we know what they're watching. Um, we know, um, that the older demographic just watches more TV cause that's what they grew up with. Um, so that's, you know, there's so many different factors of why we feel, feel like TV works, but the great thing is like, if you know what your demographic is doing and you're hitting that audience, you're more likely to get the deals that you need to get. Right. Yeah. Now, so say someone's looking to advertise on TV, what are they looking at when they want to advertise? Obviously you got to make the ad, like make the video. But are they advertising and picking which shows, picking which channels, picking which areas? Like, how, how does that all work? Yeah. So when I first started, I went to my media guy and I said, here's my demographic. So he looked at some different things and he's like, okay, this is what I feel like our demo, your demographic is watching. And so he put a schedule together and, you know, presented it to me. And we have tried over the last 10 years, expensive commercials, and we've tried inexpensive commercials. And luckily the stuff that's inexpensive has worked. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you, you can't necessarily get it a hundred percent. Like we're hit, like this show has a hundred percent of our demographic, but we know more of what our demographic is watching based on what we tried and tested over, over the years. So now when someone comes to us to, to get on TV, we have the data. It's like, okay, this is what's worked for us. And this is now what's working for over a hundred real estate investors we're working with. And so we can basically plug and play it in, uh, in every market. Okay. And that's huge too, because that information, you get to see what kind of results you're getting from all of your clients with all of the data and see it from a bird's eye view versus just doing it yourself and seeing from one campaign. Oh, well, we're getting leads here and not there. So you get to see like the mass data. All of your clients get to benefit from that stuff on the ad buying side. Yeah. When I launched this, I'm like, okay, we've been, so for the last 10 years, like when I tell people about TV, they're like TV for real estate investing. Like they just kind of turn their head, like whatever, that's weird. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've been part of big masterminds where there's just some heavy hitters and literally like me and one other guy, um, actually two masterminds I joined one, I joined six or seven years ago, I, me and one other guy were the only guy on TV. And then I joined one about a year ago and it was only me and another investor. Again, we're the only ones on TV. And since then, you know, since I have a program, I've gotten a lot of people, uh, members in the mastermind on TV and they're doing well. Um, but people just don't know about TV. It's like, you know, when they think about marketing for real estate, they think about texting, cold calling, direct mail, SEO, PPC, Facebook. Um, I might be missing one or two others there, but nobody really thinks about TV. Uh, and so when I launched this program, um, I didn't know if it was going to work in other markets. I'm like, I'm crushing it with TV. Like, will it, will it work in other markets? So um, so I did a test launch and lo and behold, I mean, most of the clients that we did a test launch on just started crushing it right out of the gate. I mean, we're talking about like, you know, most people are like, oh, TV, that's just branding. Like you're going to have to do it for six to 12 months to start getting a return, or you may not even see a return. It may just be branding, right? You're spending money to brand. And it's like, no, this is branding, but it's also returning a direct ROI within uh, the first month. In fact, we've got... Um, uh, a client that just launched six weeks ago, I just got on a zoom call with them the other day. And they're like six weeks in, they already have seven contracts and over a hundred thousand dollars in profits projected, um, from their first six weeks on TV. And that's not very uncommon. Like a lot of our clients are going, Holy crap. First 30 days, I did five deals. I did three deals. I did eight deals. I did a hundred thousand or for, I mean, it's just crazy how fast, um, commercials produce for our clients. So, 
um, yeah, it's just something that I, I didn't realize that I had, I was sitting on gold for a lot of other people for so long. And luckily about a year and a half ago, someone's like, you need to start helping other people do this. And so with all the other marketing methods becoming really competitive, it's something that, uh, is not, uh, not very prevalent in most markets. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And it is interesting. Yeah. Cause a lot of people do say, yeah, it's just branding, but like now, how are you guys tracking? Do you just use a specific phone number on the ad so people can tell the direct return? of anyone who calls the numbers or what do people do in there? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we buy the phone number for our clients. Um, we make sure it's a number that's easy to remember. Um, so when, you know, it's kind of interesting, we've had some, some people that pretty smart, successful investors come to us and say, you know, we we're doing, we're doing TV already. You know, we probably had maybe, maybe a handful, um, uh, and we're doing okay. We're not doing great. And so they're, they, you know, they, I pull up their information. And I'm like, first of all, the shows you're on aren't, aren't, aren't great. And the, the way your commercial is, it's your phone number is not easy to remember. Your website's not easy to remember. Your message isn't clear. Um, so that's another piece, you know, a lot, not a lot of other pieces to the formula that we have is like, we feel like we've got a very good recipe for everything that we do that, um, that fits very well. Cause you know, commercials are 30 seconds, right? So they may remember your message, but if they don't remember your phone number, they can't write it down. Cause it's really hard to remember they're just going to go online and Google somebody and probably find one of your clients that you're managing Brian with their, you know, their online marketing. So, um, so you definitely want an easy to remember, t- uh, uh, number for TV. That way you can see if it's working, how many people are calling, what kind of times of day they're calling. Um, and then also, you know, have an easy to remember website. So when, so if someone, cause you know how it is, like some people like to text, some people like to call and some people just like to go online and fill out a form. Um, so you want to be able to, to cater to every single one of those t- different types of people. Right. And that's a good point. You just brought up too. If you're doing TV advertising, you should definitely be setting up at least bidding on Google pay-per-click for your brand name. Cause people may Google you. And they're finding your competition, thinking it's you calling them and then not finding out till it's too late. And by then they might just lock down a deal because they like that guy now. A hundred percent. Absolutely. And for like five bucks a day or something, just stick that up just to, just to let something run. Now, I know from our side with guys making videos, most people don't like being in front of the camera or feel awkward, things like that. Like, how does that process work and how do you, how do you help people actually make the commercials? Yeah. So two parts to it. One is um, we've had people sign up and say, I don't even want to like, I don't want to do anything. So I shoot the commercial. Um, I mean, they're going to prove the ad spend and stuff like that, but they're like, you put together the script, you shoot the commercial, you buy the phone number. Like we want to be like, we literally want like five minutes. Like I've got one guy that does like 600 deals a year. And he's like, if I have to spend more than like an hour on this, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, okay. So I shot the commercial I did, you know, I did the whole deal and, um, and he was off and running, you know, within 30 days and, and didn't have to spend any time on it. Uh, but the thing is I set this up, like I would want it to be set up, uh, as a client. Um, so first of all, there's some, there's some places where you spend money and you don't know where it's going. So someone may say, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars and you have no idea where it's going. You just have to trust them. Well, first of all, we present the schedule to them and like, Hey, here's what we negotiated with the station. Here's exactly what you're paying. And then um, when it comes to shooting the commercial, we want our clients in the commercial and we want their brand. So we, even if I shoot the commercial for our clients, we still put their brand name in there because we want them to brand them. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's almost as powerful to have the owner in the commercial because they're the ones that are meeting with the sellers. They're the ones that are probably meeting with the contractors. Um, they're potentially raising private money. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we really push our clients to be in the commercial. We put the scripts together. We set them up, uh, in, to, you know, to shoot in, in their market, uh, at a studio. So we make it super simple and easy. Like literally our clients typically have like one to two hours invested in, in their TV commercial before they get running. That's cool. That was my next question too. If they had to fly out to see you or if they could do it local. So, so you partner up with your studios locally in their city and they can just go record there. Yeah, absolutely. I live in San Diego. I've got a ton of clients in Orange County that, um, you know, do virtual markets in other places. And, you know, some of them will drive down because I do, I do a, a video shoot about once a month anyway. So I'm like, Hey, if you want to come down and do a video shoot, let's, let's do it. But, uh, I had a guy the other day, I was like, yeah, I'd actually come like to come see you. Maybe I'll come just fly to San Diego. It'd be cool to, you know, meet you and, and, and be in San Diego. And if someone wants to do that, that's totally cool. But, um, but yeah, we, we make it easy and, and, uh, set people up in their market to shoot it. 
Yeah, that's cool. What do what what should people expect to spend? Like, what's an average spend that they want to get that that say on a monthly basis? And then how long is a minimum? Because I know thing you have to let things run. You can't just like t- try it for a month and be like, oh, you know what? That sucked. It didn't work. Like, what's a mm-hmm. good time frame people should expect on a minimum level to let TV ads run? And what's the average spend that they could expect if they wanted to do it? Yeah. So we, we, uh, we, we don't have a long-term commitment. We basically just tell our clients like run for three months, like give us three months. Chances are in three months, you're going to know whether it's working or, um, whether at least getting phone calls and it's just a matter of time before it starts working. Right. Uh, so very rarely have we launched someone in 90 days. They're not getting many calls. Um, typically within 90 days, our clients are seeing a very good return. Um, and when I say good return, I'm saying at least a three to five X on their money. Um, and then from a standpoint of, um, uh, ad spend, um, you're looking at between five and 10 grand actually can get you five to 10 grand per month in, in a market can get you a lot of commercials, um, and do really well for, for, for you. Um, you know, we have some clients spending five grand a month and literally making 50 to hundred grand a month on their commercials. Uh, it's crazy. Um, so that's in medium to small markets. Um, some of the bigger markets you're going to have to spend 10 to 15 grand. Uh, and then there's some really big markets where you have to spend 20, like LA and New York and some markets where just the TV reach is just huge. Um, but usually five to 10 grand can get you a, a really good, um, budget and get you a lot of commercials and get you a lot of deals. Nice. Do you see any specific markets that are uh, hot right now that people should be doing this in? Um, like the ones, let me rephrase that. So I know like San Diego and stuff be super expensive on ads. I would guess Pittsburgh would probably be mediocre. Like what, what markets do you see that are, you get a really good bang for your buck? Well, the ones that I would tell you already have clients in, so probably would create competition there. Um, but I can tell you if you're in a small to medium sized market, chances of you getting a really good return is pretty high. And the reason being is that if you're spending, you know, let's say five grand a month, even 10 grand a month, you do the math on it, like five grand, you do one deal a month and you make 20 to 30 grand. That's a pretty good return, right? You only have to do one deal. And usually with five grand, you're hitting like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, right? Um, So even if you're spending 10 grand and you do one deal, you're making an okay return. But if you do three to four deals in a month, you're crushing it in that market, you know, making, you know, most people are making 25 to 30. Well, let's say, let's, let's even say 20 grand per deal. You do three deals at 60 grand and you're spending 10. That's a really good return. Um, so I'm, I'm not trying to skirt around your question and not give you like exact markets, but we have clients that are uh, in markets crushing it that I could, you know, mention, but we're, you know, those markets are already taken. But, uh, if anybody is in a, in in a, and there's a lot of like, Midwest and Southeast type markets where there's like a population of like 300 to 500,000 that a small ad spend will get you a lot of commercials and do really well. Okay. So three to 500,000 small, what would it be like half a million to like 1.5 million would be the medium and then bigger than 1.5. Is that how you think? Yeah. And, and the way, the way that DMAs are, it, it, it says it's basically homes with households. Like, so for instance, I'm going to throw out a, a city, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Cause I, cause I looked at it yesterday. There's a million homes with TVs, which means there's probably close to 3 million people. Um, so we consider that, uh, a mid to probably a, a small, large market. Um, so 10 grand a month, a little bit more can get you some good ads in, in that area. Um, so I say the 300 to 500,000, that's typically like the main city, but typically when you're looking at the main city, there's a lot of surrounding areas that, um, that you're going to hit as well. Um, so 300 to 500,000 population may actually reach over a million people by the time you add in, uh, all of the suburbs and just the surrounding areas. Okay. Yeah. That, that answers what I was asking. <clears throat> and then that's interesting too, because even on an ROI, it's kind of, I'm going to guess with TV, it's kind of like a snowball thing too, right? Like you may get some deals, but then people keep seeing you. It will probably compound, wouldn't it? We've seen it both ways. We've seen it where people just crush it out of the gate doing, you know, five to 10 deals a month. And then all of a sudden after, you know, four, five, six months, they're calling us and they're like, we're only doing two to three deals a month. And I'm like, you're still doing a decent amount of deals. It's just, you know, may, you know, people seeing your commercial for the first time, you know, maybe you just got a flood of calls. 
And then we've seen it the other way around where it does like take a little while for people to see it and get warmed up and then they start calling. Um, so yeah, we've seen it both ways, but I've been on TV for 10 years now and, um, you know, people have seen me for 10 years. So if they saw the commercial nine years ago, they weren't ready to sell and they see it today. Then they've seen it so many times that it should have resonated with them and they should know who I am and, and, and trust us and call us. Um, so we still get, it's kind of cool. We get, we get some, you know, probably two or three big deals off TV every year, I would say. Um, on average, um, we just actually close or not close. We negotiated a contract yesterday, um, that'll make over a hundred thousand dollars from a TV deal, which will basically pay for more than a year of like more than a year of ad spend just from that one deal. Yeah, that's huge. That That is huge. <clears throat> so yeah, TV. Yeah, that, that's, it's good. If, they, if any investors out there are trying to look for other avenues to generate deals, get that awareness, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> And I got the, I got the budget for it. And you guys, so mainly you're looking for the clients that uh, would be a good fit for you too, or probably the guys doing a couple of deals a month, right? Or what, what's your ideal person that works really well to get really well with you that has a high likelihood? Is it flippers or wholesalers? So I would say two things come to mind for clients that do well with us. Um, one are if they're experienced. So if they're doing two to five to 10 deals a month, um, especially if they're already spending a lot of money on like direct mail, excuse me, direct mail and some other, uh, other, uh, other methods that they're branding, you know, they have their branding, um, they'll do well because, you know, like direct mail, I've got, I've got some clients that are spending 10 to 30 grand a month on direct mail. And it's like, if they add five to 10 grand of TV advertising, you know, chances are they're probably, they could potentially do one extra deal from direct mail just because they're hitting so many people. And when they see the commercial, they're going to get that much more uh, response from their, from, from that. Um, so that's one thing experience people that are already doing a lot of marketing. And then two is people that, well, maybe three. So two is people have their sales process together. So we, I have one client that was newer and he was only doing maybe a deal a month or something like that. And he signed up for our program and he just got out of the military and, um, he's been with me for, I want to say four months. And he's telling me all the time, like the deals he's doing, he already made a hundred over a hundred thousand dollars on one deal in his first four months. Uh, and he's like texting me like, or he comes on our mastermind calls that we have. And he's like, yeah, I did another $30,000 deal, did another $20,000 deal. So he's doing like probably 50 to hundred grand a month on a $5,000 ad spend. Um, but to get to your point, it's, I can tell he is on it. He's a sales guy. He answers the phone. He's on most of our calls. Like this guy has it put together where he's just dialed in. Um, so that's another thing. And then the third thing is, I think just people that they get the process and buy into it because sometimes it's not going to produce in the night in the first 30 days, 30 days. A lot of times it does. Um, but we, I've got one client that, um, after, about three months, he was like, he'd actually been in two other markets doing TV. So he knew it worked, but then he was like at the three month mark. And he's like, you know what, it, this third market just isn't doing quite as well as, as the first two markets. And he's like, but I'm going to give it some time, you know? So he texts me like a week or two later and he's like, dude, I just locked up a, a deal that I'm just wholesaled for a hundred thousand dollars. And then he texts me two, 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 uh, two weeks later, I think it was. Yeah. Two weeks later. And he's like, I got another $20,000 deal. So he just started like after his third month, he just started, you know, started cranking deals out. So those that are patient, understand it by in the process and, um, and they're just going to work the program. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and you know what, to that second point you brought up with the sales process, I, I know, I'm, I know in digital, and I'm going to guess it's the same on TV. If somebody calls you, you need to answer the phone. And you got to be like Johnny on a spot with them because I know on digital side, they're going to the next person because they're online, but I'm guessing with TV, a lot of these people, are they going to leave a voicemail and wait for you to call them back or are they just going to move on? Yeah. I mean, we, we call, we call TV leads, um, forgiving leads typically just because, um, if you don't answer the phone and you call back, you know, they're going to, they're, they're going to understand and be patient because, um, you're on TV, right? It's not like you just text them or sent them a, uh, you know, sent them something that they don't really, it was kind of unsolicited, if you will. Um, and then, um, but yeah, but, but any which way you want to answer the phone, right? Like, you know, we started recently, um, a few months ago, like recording calls and stuff like that for our clients. 
and the ones that were okay with it. And, um, we realized a lot of people weren't answering the call. And then even when they did answer the call, um, like, uh, my team the other day was like, man, uh, so-and-so like when they answer the phone, they're just, they're, they're like in their car. You can tell it's loud and noisy out. You can tell there's just like hurried and rushed and it's just not a good conversation. So, um, so you got to really be dialed in with that. You got to be able to answer the phone. If you don't answer, call them back quickly and then just have a good process that, you know, some of these deals, it takes 30, 60, 90 days to put them together. So having a good CRM, putting them in there, having a good follow-up, a lot of our clients have lead managers, making sure their lead managers are handling the leads appropriately. Um, so if you have that side of it dialed in, you're just much more likely to, to have success. And, you know, we even have some clients that you can tell aren't super dialed in on that and they're still having success, but if they had dialed it in, they could just have even that much more success. Right. Yeah. That's good. So that's a lot of information on TV. Like, are we missing anything or what, what, what else do we, should we talk about? Or is that pretty much cover high level? No, that's high level, man. I'm telling you, there's not a lot of competition in, in most markets. You know, when I talk to people, they're like, yeah, maybe no one other guy on TV. And, you know, when you're looking at hitting hundreds of thousands of people or potentially millions of people, there's just, you know, there's not a lot of competition and, and it's, 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 it's really hard. So there, so there's the barrier of entry of TV is high and it's two reasons. One is the mentality behind it. So just like, like I said, some people are like TV and they kind of like, that's weird, you know, and they don't even think twice and, you know, won't even try TV. And then even if they did try it, if you go and call the stations um, and try and get rates from them, one, they're really hard to deal with because you you have sales reps that just don't like to return calls and just aren't really well put together. And then if they, you do get someone, they're going to try and sell you the most expensive package they have, which typically is not your demographic. It's not what you want. Um, so you're going to have to find the right representative. You're going to have to know what station to call because there's many stations to call. Um, you're going to have to get a good representative. You're going to have to know what shows to be on, even if you do call the right station, which they don't know, they're not going to know. They're going to kind of maybe guess. Um, so there's there's a lot of pieces to put together. The scripts, you got to know what scripts you know uh, work well, or you have to put together your own script and kind of guess. There's so many different pieces to it that the barrier of entry is really high. Um, so that's why people come to us. They're like, we would rather pay you so that we get, get it done, get it done, right. Get it done fast. And so we don't have to do it because it's, it can be painful to try and call and negotiate with stations and, you know, go back and forth with them. And then the brain damage of, you know, my, am I spending the the right money in the right places? And then, you know, 30, 60 days later, if you're not getting the results and you got to go back to the representatives, whereas, you know, we've done this, you know, over a hundred times with our clients and we just know what the, like the back of our hand. So could you do it on your own? Absolutely. I figured it out when I did it back in the day, but luckily I had a really good media buyer on my team that, um, that knew what he was doing. Um, uh, but, um, I mean, that's, that's basically the gist of it. There's not a lot of competition just because it's, you know, mentally people don't think about it. And then if they do think about it, then the, the, the obstacles of getting on TV are pretty high. Yeah, that's, that's good. If, if people want to reach out to, I know some of the areas are taken, so some are not taken. If people want to reach out and find out number one, if you, they can work with you in that area, how, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, just go to realestatemasterstv.com forward slash motivated. Again, realestatemasterstv.com forward slash motivated. Um, we have a quick, quick form on our website. You can learn a little bit more about our company, what we do and that kind of thing. Um, and then fill out the form, um, schedule a call with us, see if your market's available. Uh, if it's not, you can get on a waiting list. And then um, a lot of clients that or a lot of people that reach out to us, their market's taken. So they may go to the market next to us, met next to them, or they may have a buddy that is across the country doing flipping and is like, Hey, do you want to, you know, if I, if I, you know, do the ad spend and kind of help with the back end of it, would you meet with the sellers and do the deals and things of that nature? So, um, so there's different ways to do it, even if your market is taken. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, that's interesting. So <clears throat> yeah, anyone reach out, we'll put the uh, link in the show notes also. And yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming on, Tony. Good, Absolutely. Good yeah. Thanks for having me, bud. Appreciate it, man. All right, guys. Hey, th- go out there and crush it and uh, close some deals. Till next time. We'll see you later.